Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm the CEO of Dynamic Boards and we advertise non-executive director roles from right across the UK. And today I've got Louise, uh, Chair, and Gareth, CEO of Ecology Building Society, and they're looking for new board members. And I uh, thought we'd just have a chat and hear a bit about the organisation and what they're looking for. So, Gareth, mortgages that have a positive environmental impact. Tell me, what does that mean? Thank you for uh, thank you for talking to me today, Sarah. And mortgages with a positive impact. When people ask me what I do, I'm proud to tell them that I that I work in financial services in a sustainable and an ethical building society that are really trying to put people and planet at the heart of what we do. So really simply at Ecology, we provide mortgage lending to people who are looking to have a positive environmental impact. And I'll tell you what a green mortgage isn't. A green mortgage isn't just rewarding somebody with a you know 0.1% discount off of their headline rate because they've managed to get a an EPCB new build property. That, that That's not what we do here. What we do here is we will look at different methodologies of construction, different material types, really helping people to deeply renovate properties that might be completely dilapidated. Last year, we, we helped nearly 300 people to build environmentally sound homes, all of whom benefited from something unique in the marketplace, a kind of post-works discount most people normally get their discounts up front but you know the better the environmental impact the more discount but but we'll look at really different projects as well Sarah um, last year we helped 11 community-led projects people that are living in deliberative communities co-housing shared ownership if it makes a difference to the world uh, we want to do it that's awesome to hear Gareth and I guess I'm I'm curious, when I think building society, I think of a sort of 150 year old business model of serving a local community uh, with savings and mortgages. Louise, do you want to explain how does ecology fit into that? Well, for a start, thank you, Sarah, and it's, it's good to see you. Well, for a start, we're not 150 years old, we're 42 years old. We're the most recent building society to have been founded. To, um, we were established in 1981 in order to make an environmental difference. So yes, we are in a sense a community organization, but it's the environmental community rather than a local community. And what we want to do is we want to change the world. Our vision is a fair society in a sustainable world, and we want to make that happen. And being a building society is a tool we can use to make that happen. So we often sort of jokingly say oh, we're an activist organisation masquerading as a building society, which is actually true to a certain extent. We have to be a very good building society mm -hmm. in order to, to have the impact that we want. But the, be, the building society ness is definitely a means to an end rather than the end in itself. Thank you, Louise. Wow, that's very different to what I've heard elsewhere in the sector. So, Gareth, I guess with that sort of mission purpose piece, how do you reconnect people with that, maybe particularly a younger generation as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just got to say, by the way, it's quite a lot of fun doing it. And it's awesome being able to, you know, have that real differentiation. I worked in mainstream financial services for, you know, for a long time. And, and it's truly liberating to be able to, you know, match my passion for trying to make a difference in the world to, to you know, to what, to what we do here as a day job. But I think, you know, if you look at the prevailing generations of, of people that are kind of, you know, entering both the world of secondary education, if you look at the, you know, the school strikes, if you look at the kind of the real passion from the people that are getting into the world of work, Look, we got to make a difference to the to the environment, right? We 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 have to COP twenty eight uh, or COP out as it was called, you know, uh, showed us that there that there has to be a path through trying to change what we do and how we do it. And I think our mission is really resonant with that. The challenge, I suppose, is that we've got a less than one percent spontaneous market awareness. And so over the kind of, you know, the next 42 years, I, I like to tell the team that we've spent 42 years being a startup. It's now time to start being that upstart. And, uh, and, and that's it, right? That's the kind of, that's the gig, basically, Sarah. And, and how can we go out and be a bit pokey, be a bit punchy and quite agitatory to try and really get the brand message of ecology out there to connect with that audience that truly believes this is the right way uh, to do business? That's brilliant, Gareth. And I guess so. You've worked in the oil tankers before, and yeah. uh, been in the big banks, and then now you've sort of jumped into the speedboat side of things. So, can you give us a sense of your scale? Yeah, of course. So we've got total assets of just over three hundred million, mortgage assets shy of a quarter of a, a billion. 
Uh, when I joined the society last June, we were 45 employees. We're just about to onboard our 70th employee as we look to make sure that we absolutely are ready and prepared to, to scale up in, in a safe and, and secure way, both for our, our members, but to make sure that we you know, deliver our regulatory and systemic responsibilities uh, as well. We've got super ambitious growth plans um, over the next coming couple of years. And you know, we, we need people who are equally ambitious to, to join the board and that can complement our, you know, our senior management team to, you know, to really deliver a, a great experience for our people, but also contribute to what is going to be a lot of fun and an exciting journey. Thank you, Gareth. And Louise, I guess I'm hearing a lot of change transformation there, am I? Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of change going on. I mean, Gareth joined just 18 months ago. I became chair a few months before that. We're really moving on from um, the, our last CEO had been in post for 26 years and wow. he did a fantastic job, but maybe not all the changes that were needed, certainly towards the end of the, the time happened so that we're having to do a bit of catch up here. And what we're doing is we're really moving to make ourselves ready for the next five or 10 years. We're looking at where we want to be in five or 10 years time and getting ourselves ready to be able to do that now. So we're really thinking ahead, looking to upskill ourselves. So the uh, exec, Gareth is doing a fantastic job on recruiting new colleagues, getting some really, really good quality people in. And that's what we're doing on the board too, is 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 really moving to a new phase of, of the way we do things. We've recently revised our governance structures, our board committees and so on, looking at with fresh eyes at how we do things and making sure that we do them properly. Brilliant. Gareth, do you want to tell us what those board committees are and what give us a sense of that board composition? You know, you mentioned that you want the non-execs to complement the exec. So tell yeah. us a bit more about that. Yeah, definitely. So um, clearly there's the, the there's the main board that meets 10 times per year, but we have very much moved to a subcommittee model. So we have a board risk committee, a board audit committee. As you could probably imagine for an organization like ours, we've also got an environmental and societal impact committee. And then we've got normal people remuneration culture and a nominations committee as well so it would be expected and indeed eagerly anticipated that some of our new neds would indeed join those uh, join those committees okay and um, so what are you looking for from these new board members well, we're looking for people, first and foremost, people that have got an absolute excitement and passion to come and join Ecology to help us to, to change the world, like, like Louise said. But um, there are also, also some you know, quite important regulatory responsibilities that we've got to make sure that we deliver on. So um, really for this round of recruitment, and I'll ask Louise uh, to, to kind of come in at the, at the end as well, but people with prudential risk uh, experience, both you know, either at executive or, or, or non-executive level, or even potentially as a contractor but you know primarily focusing around credit risk liquidity management capital management we also need somebody to be able to join our audit committee somebody that's you know had financial experience or exposure to audit committees in in the past to you know help make sure that we stay on the uh, the, the straight and narrow and louise i'm sure will have some uh, some thoughts as well in terms of how the overall board works yeah, I think that's right. Well, I mean, there are specific skills we need that we know that we need to either add to the board or, or in most cases, sort of beef up the expertise on the board. But obviously, board members have they don't they're not specialist in some ways that they have particular areas of expertise. Yes. But what a board does is look at the organisation as a whole. And so we need board, I mean, all board members have to, to pull their weight on that. Um, you know, look at the strategic implications of things, look at the overall risks to the organisation. I mean, it's basically a question of board members, obviously, having the society's interests, overall interests at heart. And that includes doing the best by our members, both our borrowing members and our savings members. But also we do recognise that all our members, although they're interested, I mean, we're a financial services firm, of course they're interested in the financial side of things, but they are also really, really committed to the impact we can have. So it's about um, serving their interests in that area as well. So it's a, it, I mean, being a board director, if, if you haven't been a board director before, it, it can seem a bit off-putting. You think, oh, there's an awful lot there. And, and there is, but 
actually, I find it just really, really interesting being able to see the big picture and to be able to contribute in areas where you might not have specialist knowledge, but you can bring your skills and experience to bear. It's great. And you can ask good questions. I think that's something that people don't appreciate until they've done it, that if you've been brought in with a specific skill set, it's not like you're going to go quiet for the rest of the meeting. No. <laughs> you're, you're right. your, your voice is there for my voice is only just about here but your voice in the board meetings is there for the whole of the meeting and actually having people who haven't worked in an area ask some basic questions can be really helpful for everyone yeah so, um you mentioned 10 board meetings a year and you mentioned subcommittee meetings what happens in person what's online can you give a sense of that yeah, so the board meetings we do in person in West Yorkshire. It's a few miles outside Skipton, lovely, lovely part of the world. Um, I've, I, I live in Cambridge, so I'm used to, to, to the commute by now. I go by train. Um, Gareth lives mostly near Bristol, so he, he I, and our, our board members come from all over the country, um, from Glasgow down to Worcester and me in Cambridge and so on. So that's, you know, we, we all get together. Um, committee meetings take are online or hybrid, um, so so they're rather easier. And we have a couple of strategy days sort of aligned to board meetings. Our board meetings tend to take half a day. I mean, a good slightly over half a day. So people tend to be up for the whole day, and it's a good opportunity to get together with each other to um, get to see our colleagues in in the office too, and um, you know, really a bit of personal contact. I find is is very helpful. Yeah, that's great. And I, I guess for anyone watching that hasn't um, explored the non-exec role before, lots of non-execs do travel for their board meetings. And I've been on three uh, boards as non-execs now. I live in East London and one one's in Nottingham, one's in Manchester and one's in Wilmslow. That's a terrible combination. I should find some closer to home. But it just means quite a lot of people do end up doing the, the kind of commute that Louise mentioned. So and um, because it's only 10 times a year and possibly a strategy day as well, I think you might have mentioned in the pack. Um, then it is feasible to to consider the role, even if you don't live um, in West Yorkshire or anywhere near there. And, and and just if I can add there, West Yorkshire is a fantastic place to spend some holiday time or weekends time. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> and our board meetings are, are on Fridays. So that helps. Oh, very nice. Um, so do you need to have prior experience as a non-exec director? No, it's, it's being prepared to enter into the spirit to, to you know think about what being a board member means which is that you're not considering operational detail you're looking at strategy you're looking at the big picture um everybody has to start somewhere and it's if, if someone has got the um commitment to our mission and values and the experience that would help that's great that's what we want brilliant and it's, it's great to hear and i do think for lots of people, this is a really exciting role. You're in a market that I can see is really growing. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd love people to hear about this and consider it, hopefully, from this video. So we know the deadline is the 15th of January. So there'll be a bit of mince pies and application writing at the same time, I imagine, here. Yeah. But Gareth, do you want to start off? Is there any final things you want anyone to hear if they're considering this role? What I would love them to hear is this. Please apply if you want to come make a difference to an organization that wants to make a difference where it's more than just turning up i think there's a whole load of care that goes into to, to running ecology we want people who are going to come and bring up their, their whole selves um, be them and i'm excited by the fact that uh, this gives us an opportunity to continue to 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 evolve the board at what is basically uh, a really exciting time because it is time to be uh, an upstart for the next 42 years and please if anyone wants any more details uh, feel free to reach out I'd, I'd love those and welcome those conversations Sarah. Thank you Gareth and Louise any final remarks? Uh, just to echo what Gareth said this is a fantastic time to be involved with an organisation going through a huge period of change um, extremely exciting extremely gratifying and um I hate to say it, but life affirming to see that they're, you know, that we are trying to do good stuff and we are, are making progress and it's great. And, you know, obviously very happy to chat about this to, to anybody who's interested. Super. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Gareth and Louise, for your time. And I hope this has been a helpful video to watch um, if you're a candidate thinking about applying. Um, you'll have the links below so that you can follow uh, to see all the details and to reach out if you've got any questions. All the best. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.